So, I mean, I think like Soft Giving, who changed their name, by the way, the company Soft Giving, who I've, I have turned down sponsorships with. I have too. They are sus. They are sus. very yeah, sus. Yeah, I thought the same thing. They do um, charity streams and they take a cut of the charity and they say that they don't but they do in some weird way. You guys I work with soft giving. Don't do and it, man. Apparently, I don't know if I can say this. Someone in chat didn't receive their PS5. Minx, so, did you now... get paid to do it? Yeah. You we got paid to 5, do it. 000. Where do you think that money comes from? Are uh... they taking money that chat's giving? Hey everyone, so I recently came across this story because as many people know, I stream on Twitch. You know, I get a few emails here and there. I've got 100 viewers, so I'm a pretty big deal. But one recently caught my eye because it was an opportunity to work with charity. This was a charity that I'd seen a lot of the big Twitch streamers work with, so I kind of figured, okay, this must be pretty legit, right? They're probably reaching out to me because they know I'm the next big thing on Twitch. Like, it's one of those situations where they're trying to get to Kelly Clarkson before she's the American Idol. You know what I'm saying? Like, I get it, okay? We, I get why they're reaching out. So, you know, whenever there's an opportunity presented to me, I usually start to do some investigating, just trying to figure out who this, this company is, whatever. And immediately, the first question that came to my mind was, um, why are they wanting to pay me? to do a charity stream. Kind of weird, right? Paid charity stream, sponsored charity stream. It kind of sounds like an oxymoron. It was beginning to feel a lot like deja vu from my loop giveaways video in the sense that it's kind of like, okay, here's a chance for an influencer to appear philanthropic to their audience, but in reality, they're getting paid to do giveaways. Like it was just, it felt very similar to that. I'm like, this is kind of a weird situation that I wonder if people really know what's going on here. Okay, because I've seen a lot of people do these charity streams with this particular company. For me, the sanctimony of it all was almost too much to bear. I knew I had to dig deeper on this because it's just a topic of interest at this point. So basically here's what happens next, okay? I send an email and basically I pretend like I'm a damsel in distress who just simply needs help getting her first charity stream off the ground. I gotta get more info, right? The contact who had initially reached out to me, he basically reassured me that they'd set aside a budget for me, you know, cha-ching. <laughs> and that they would provide me everything I needed for my stream. How great is that, right? Unfortunately, it seemed like he was intentionally trying to be very vague, like he's not answering my questions. He told me like, okay, if I wanna know more, I can schedule a time to meet with him on Discord, <laughs> which I guess is what people do now, or maybe in the gaming space is like everything goes through Discord. So that was kind of a red flag in my opinion, but it's just weird. It's like, why can't this guy just tell me what I wanna know? in email, right? You know, I wanted to be an investigative journalist kind of thing in this situation and go through with, you know, meeting him on Discord. But honestly, it gives me like Snapchat creepy vibes <laughs> being on a Discord meeting. So um, I decided to ghost him, okay? Not happening. So he didn't give me much information, obviously through our email exchanges, but it was enough for me to launch a full scale investigation into what I believe is potentially a major scam sandwich, okay? So let's get into it right now. I do wanna preface this video by saying that these are just my opinions. I cannot confirm that any of these things are true. You'll understand why I'm saying, like talking like this and why some of my verbiage in this video is gonna be a little bit like, Ugh, what's, what's wrong with that girl? But you'll understand later as I get throughout the video. These are, you know, just my interpretations of certain situations. These are just my opinions, nothing is fact. I also wanna say that there's a lot of great videos that I will reference throughout this video, which I will have linked down below. They were very integral to me discovering all this, working everything out, getting a lot of information. Um, so thank you to those people and they will be linked down below. So what are we talking about today? Well, we're talking about a company called Soft Giving. Soft Giving is a for-profit, for profit tech company. They saw an opportunity to capitalize on charitable giving. Basically, they saw the success of other companies that were doing it before them, such as Tiltify, and they decided to build a middleman business model connecting streamers and charities to host charity events. 
and charity streams. So instead of linking directly to the charity site and saying, hey guys, go just donate straight to XYZ charity, they instead encourage their donors to go directly through their platform. So it's, you know, the platform that they have created. There's reasons for this, by the way, of course. But the idea is basically that soft giving acts as sort of like an event coordinator and they kind of handle the more advanced technical side of things on behalf of the charity and then the charity will pay them a commission based on the work that they do helping facilitate these charity events. So here's how everything works. Soft giving connects with a charity that wants to obviously raise money for their cause and also, you know, expand their reach, all things like that. They then make a deal with the charity and they determine what the budget's gonna be. So that can include how much the streamers are gonna be paid because the streamers are getting paid, how much money they need to allot for giveaway prizes like PS5s and all that other stuff, the goal amount of money that they want to raise, and then also how much soft giving will receive in commission. Pretty straightforward. Once this contract with the charity's been signed, then soft giving goes out and they find Twitch streamers to then host these charity streams. They propose a contract either directly to the streamer or to the streamer's respective organization that they are under. And those contracts with the streamers include how much the streamer will get paid, talking points obviously during the stream, what the giveaways will be, what charity they'll be raising money for, and what the goal amount of money the streamer should raise during that stream. In addition to this payment that the streamer gets, soft giving also offers like technical support. They'll offer overlays, like pre-made overlays for the stream that show like the number raised and you know, pop-ups and things like that. And they also offer one-on-one -on -one event strategizing to help maximize fundraising efforts and boost the donations. So help with coming up with donation goals and tailoring that specifically to the streamers. Now, none of this may seem that bad to you. You're like, okay, what's the problem? Okay, sounds great to me. Well, here's how the sausage is made, okay? How does soft giving make money is the question. Well, during the budget discussions with the charity, they determine the amount of money that will go to them for all their hard work, you know, sourcing the talent and hosting the event. Now, in my opinion, and this is sort of an important point to make, I feel like in this situation, soft giving has capitalized on the lack of manpower or the lack of technical knowledge that a lot of these charities often lack in this regard. However, all of this is leading me into my next point. In February of 2023, there was a bombshell leaked contract. It was tweeted out by at Santa Devs on Twitter. It was a contract between Soft Giving and another charity. And it was revealed that Soft Giving had proposed to this charity that 50% of the event funds would be paid back to them in a form of commission. Okay, 50%. Yeah, that means 50% of whatever was raised during this Twitch stream would not go back to the charity as most people who donated probably hoped that it would. <laughs> okay, they hoped that 100% of their donation goes to the charity, I would assume. But instead it would be going back to soft giving, which is a for-profit tech company. Okay, yikes. That's a lot of money. Another way that soft giving makes money is through tips. They state that this is an optional tip that is used to help soft giving support even more charities and fundraisers. When you go to their website, there is a suggested 15% tip, which is auto generated on top of your donation. And in my experience, this is my experience, if you do not wish to tip soft giving and you just want to donate to the charity, right? Um, let's say it's $25. In my experience, if you do not wish to tip, you must manually input custom amount, and then you have to also manually input and type in zero dollars in order to avoid tipping soft giving. There's also a pre-checked box when you go to put your information in while you're doing your donation that asks if you wanna share your information with partners. And in this case, partners are another way that it appears that soft giving is making money. These are brands that basically contact soft giving who want brand awareness and goodwill for working with a charity and they can offer to sponsor the charity events, okay? If they sponsor a charity event, another thing that they can get besides goodwill and potential signups and looking philanthropic in front of an, a large audience is that they potentially might have access, in my opinion, allegedly to the contact information of the people that choose not to uncheck share information with partners box. Does that make sense? So to them in the same way that a big selling point of why people signed up for loop giveaways was that they would get contact information for people that signed up for the giveaway. It it's also sort of at play here 
where these brand partners are, are getting people's contact information when they make a donation using the soft giving platform and choosing to share their contact information with their partners if they choose not to uncheck that box. Some of these brand partners include G Fuel, T-Mobile, GoPuff, these are all listed on their website. And if a partnered brand wants to sponsor a live stream, soft giving will allegedly work that into the streamer's contract and allegedly <laughs> they will have the company make public donations which you see during the streams or maybe agree to match donations there's a lot of different ways that they can work this brand integration and product placement into the charity stream in my opinion this comes across as very disingenuous and performative that's my opinion and i'm sticking by it where there's smoke there's fire ladies and gentlemen because things are about to spiral out of control many streamers have expressed their concerns over soft giving's lack of transparency over where their viewer donations were going they've also expressed concerns over unprofessionalism, some viewers allegedly not getting their giveaway prizes, not having been reached out to, and basically draconian contracts among many other things. Some claim, allegedly, that they have been made to sign NDAs, which are non-disclosure agreements or non-disparagement clauses, which basically disallow them from speaking negatively about soft giving. It's unclear whether these agreements are short term. Some people I've heard are only a year. I don't know if they're in perpetuity. So that's sort of unclear, but a lot of people have expressed that these are in the contracts. There's a couple tweets which I'll show referencing those things without really kind of saying. One streamer claims that if he were to share his experience with soft giving, he would be threatened with legal action. In my opinion, it says a lot about a company if they cannot accept constructive criticism without suing somebody. I've been in this situation before. Many people know what it was. It happened this year. It's fresh on the tongue. Don't worry. Karma's a cat purring in my lap, okay? Additionally, many streamers who have spoken out seem to have similar complaints over soft giving's alleged unprofessionalism. Some claim that they have been suggested to set strange donation goals by soft giving representatives. There is no shortage of people on Twitter who have been like, yeah, they approached me and it was kind of weird. I saw one person who said that they wanted her to get a, a, a piercing as one of the donation goals. One of them was getting a pet as a donation goal. Uh, uh, effectively, just some really strange interactions. Um, suggested an Asian one on the team dressed as a schoolgirl. Uh, that message got deleted uh, after it was sent. But <laughs> yeah, suggested we eat dog food a whole lot. Um, they had a list of like suggested milestone goals, and some of them were not good. Uh, a friend of mine who works for a different organization worked with soft giving for a while and they, they tried to have her get a streamer to do a sexy dance if the donation goal was set. And this is part of their one-on-one -on -one service. These donation goals must be approved by them. YouTuber and streamer Jorbs made a great video summarizing his own contract and experience with soft giving after his non-disparagement clause had allegedly ended. I will link his video below. I'm gonna reference it several times throughout this video as well, but it's extremely interesting and he brings forth, in my opinion, a great point of view just about altruism and charity work as a whole. So I'll definitely link that below. He talks about a time during his soft giving contract where his soft giving representative was telling him things like you need to be more excitable soft giving was over slash mismanaging streamers that they didn't know about i already talked about them like telling me how to extract money from my community they also tried to encourage me to be and tried to encourage me to be excitable <laughs> which is like if you enjoy my content you probably find that really funny i hope you do i find it really funny <laughs> um, I'm not like an exuberant person. I'm not an extremely emotional person. I'm not an extremely excitable person. And that's one of the things that my viewership likes about my content is that I'm me, you know? Um, so they tried to tell me not to be me without knowing me. And, you know, that's 
Yeah. He also talked about a time where he had had a conversation with this soft gaming representative and basically he said this guy was being kind of rude and dismissive and just generally disagreed with the way that he decided to conduct his charity streams and the way that he engaged with his own audience. He did have a conversation with me on the morning of my birthday at 6 a.m. about like how the way that I was planning to raise money for my channel didn't seem very good right before I did my birthday charity stream. And then after my charity stream, when we raised three times what the algorithm he had said we would raise, um, and my manager sent him a message saying, see, we did it. <laughs> he did in text call her a smug bitch. So those things happened. <laughs> You know, you would kind of think that a company who's associated with charity would want streamers to raise as much money as they could. <laughs> to summarize his shocking contract that he talks about in his video, Softgiving allegedly purchased exclusivity rights to the entire organization of streamers that he belonged to at the time. This meant that as well as the 60 plus other streamers that were under this umbrella of the organization, all those people, including himself, could not work with any other charities online during that time, which I believe was about a year long contract. So no other charity work, okay, allegedly. This also came with a list of draconian requirements that the streamers had to adhere to. The first was that they were allegedly mandated to do a six hour charity stream every two months. It also meant that they must go through the soft giving platform and they had to use a charity of soft giving's choosing. So I think you can kind of presume why. Also, if the streamer did not do the charity stream, they allegedly were not able to be paid a portion of their salary by the organization. Yeah, very strange and alleged. Additionally, the streamers had to have their donation goals approved before streaming. So, you know, eat dog food, check. So that had to be approved. And they were also instructed to mention the charity like a certain amount of times per hour, which is pretty standard just for any paid sponsorship or integration. But yeah, those are just another couple things that they had to do. So there's a lot of rules. Jorbs claims that he, as well as other streamers under contract, we're not allowed to do any other charity work of any kind unless it was during one of their soft giving approved charity streams. We weren't allowed to do other charity work online. So like my friend was having a birthday party where she was raising money for the trans lifeline. And I should have just not asked and gone and done it honestly. But when I'm part of a team, I like ask, is my behavior okay? Is there, is this the right thing for me to do? Have what you're, you know? So, so I asked, <laughs> cause fuck me, right? I'm trying to be a good person in the world. So I asked them, hey, uh, well, surely you'd be okay with me like joining my friend's stream for her birthday stream, which is raising money for the trans lifeline, right? Like, you, like, right? <laughs> cause you're a, charity organization so surely you'd want me to do that to do good in the world and they're like no no you're not allowed to do that it wasn't even on my fucking stream <laughs> also i wasn't allowed to do charity streams more than every two months either so uh, like talking with soft giving reps was grotesque at times but i just like felt really insulted when I was talking about how I wanted to do a charity stream every month, I got told that like my community would be on cooldown. <laughs> like you can only extract money from people once every two months. You can't just extract money from them every month. That's too often. It was basically what was communicated to me. Like, I mean, they don't know anything about my channel. My audience is like older than a lot of people's audiences i have all sorts of people who have like coding jobs and like good incomes who can afford to give money to charity and so it feels like a conversation with a community of smart intelligent and empowered individuals about like how this cause that i found might be a good cause to support and i feel like if i present good arguments a lot of the people in the audience are like oh yeah i have money i, I want to give to charity anyway this is a good one to choose and I absolutely feel like with my community, I could do that once a month. But uh, no, I was told that I wasn't allowed to and told that I basically didn't understand anything about extracting money from my community, which I wouldn't have phrased what I was doing like that to begin with. So, so fair enough. Yeah, maybe I don't.
At this point, the floodgates are fully open. At the same time that the streamers were voicing their concerns, so were many of the viewers. Many people expressed their suspicions online over the lack of transparency as to where their donations were really going. A lot of people donate to these streams. A YouTuber named Old Man Landre was the first to question where donation funds were going due to streamers being compensated for their fundraising efforts. I'm Old Man Landre, and I was the first person to ask questions about the fundraising platform Soft Giving on February 6th, 2023, at 5.20 p.m., I tweeted this. This seems very cool. Seems worth asking, though, if Hassan the Hun or I Show Speed are being compensated for this fundraising effort and how much of the donated funds reach the intended recipients. This came to his attention likely due to the fact that some streamers working with soft giving have hashtag ad in their title of their streams. So you're like, well, what part of a charity stream is sponsored? because you have to put hashtag ad to comply with FTC. This is despite the fact that many of these charity streams claim that all of the proceeds go to charity. A lot of people were like, well, where's the money coming from to pay these streamers then if all of the proceeds are going to charity? People were reasonably upset and were left with a lot of unanswered questions. This then led to Soft Giving releasing a series of tweets after things had come to a head in February of 2023. In these tweets, Soft Giving claimed that they wanted to have an open discussion and be transparent about their business model. They then proceeded to cherry pick two events from the past year and provided pie charts to showcase the contract breakdowns as to where the funds were going. Let me just break this down. People want to know exactly how much of their donation is actually going to the charity. It's very simple. Soft giving claims that they do not handle donations directly and that they are simply paid with tips. If you remember, I talked about tips earlier. They say that the charity gets 100% of the proceeds and all of this in my opinion, is to obfuscate what is really happening here. According to their FAQ and also their Twitter, the donations go to a 5013C donor advised fund called the Giving A Foundation. 100% of it does go to charity. However, depending on whether or not the charity elected to pay upfront fees before the event started or pay performance-based fees after the event is over, the charity ends up paying self-giving in the end. This is how they're able to claim that all of the net proceeds go to charity. And this obviously does not sit right with many people, myself included, after learning that they have asked for 50% commission from a charity stream before. Kind of one of those things where it's like, well, we really need to know now what the actual breakdown is because it's been so high before. It's also worth noting, by the way, that not even streamers know at the time of their contracts, when they're in the contract phase with soft giving, what the breakdown between the soft giving and the charities is. This is all information that many have been pushing soft giving to release, obviously to no avail. I know this will be a topic of discussion, so I wanted to quickly give my two cents on this specifically, okay? Because I, I, I sort of mentioned it at the beginning and I know people are thinking it in their heads, so let's just address this for a second. Initially, of course, I did hold a silent opinion that taking money for charity streams felt just kind of icky, you know? To a certain extent, I still hold that opinion, for sure. Like, I'm, it, it's not gonna go away. However, I do want to make the distinction that many of these streamers, obviously besides a rotten few, genuinely seem to want to help raise money for charity. So for these reasons, I am willing to give streamers the benefit of the doubt. Related to taking money for sponsored charity streams, it does seem like an oxymoron, sponsored charity stream, like, it is what it is. I'm willing to look past it. It's obviously not the biggest issue here. So that's my opinion on it right now. But of course, people will say, and I'm, I'm ready for it, <laughs> who cares the money is still going to charity? And that's true. The money is still going to charity. Some money is getting raised for charity. This entire situation is extremely morally gray. And I think it's important to know that there is a lot of nuance to this and there are a lot of opinions to this. And it's hard to know what is right. However, I do think that this whole thing shows that there are people who are ready and willing to monetize even the most altruistic acts. People have a right to know that behind some charitable causes, there may be a greedy 
for-profit tech company willing to capitalize on their empathy. And I think people should know that. I think they have a right to know that. The issue with companies that have ulterior motives existing in the streaming space is that they threaten the framework of charity work on Twitch as a whole, in my opinion. Twitch is a very small ecosystem, believe it or not, compared to YouTube and TikTok and Instagram, there's so many people on there, but Twitch isn't really like that. The behavior of the top streamers on Twitch has a very tangible impact on the rest of the streamers collectively. Many of these top Twitch streamers work with soft giving on a regular basis. And with the controversies of this situation finally bubbling to the surface, it's hard not to say that any other charity work done on Twitch won't be met with skepticism in the future. In my opinion, it's situations like this that threaten the integrity of all charity streams done in the online space. As stated, it magnifies the growing fears and suspicions many people already have about charity and donating. Zach Bussey made a great point in his own soft giving video when he mentioned that there is already so much skepticism surrounding charities due to past controversies and scandals. Charity is something that people tend to do when they expect the dollar to go to the charity and go to the cause that they're actually donating to. There has been enough charity controversies over the years that has eroded the public trust. And as such, places like Charity Navigator and uh, GiveWell and Charity Intelligence have had to be set up as third-party uh, uh, overview so that you can actually research a charity and understand where your money is actually going. And it's not just going towards marketing funds. It's not just going towards uh, putting money into an executive team uh, uh, that, that manage it. It's actually going towards the cause that you want the cause to support. You know, at the end of the day, the problem isn't that people aren't willing to donate. In fact, these Twitch charity streams are hugely successful and they often bring in hundreds of thousands of dollars after just a few hours. It proves that people are willing and able to donate to causes that they believe in. Instead, the issue, in my opinion, is companies who skim off the top of charity work in order to line their own pockets and take advantage of the goodness of others. So that's it. Now I wanna know what you think, okay? Leave your comments down below as usual. I'll be sure to check them out. I'm very curious to see what people have to say about this. If there's any new points that I didn't even bring up, if there's anything else that I didn't know, feel free to reach out to me. Thanks again to the people whose videos that I referenced during this video. I really appreciate it. I will have those linked down below, of course. I hope that you check them out. Give them a like, give them a subscribe if you want to. And uh, also please subscribe to me and follow me on Twitch and also like this video if you enjoy these kind of videos and you wanna see more videos like this one. Um, so I will see you in my next one, peace. <laughs>